Hello, Matteo. So Hello. you are going to play for us Haydn. Yeah, first movement of uh, Haydn, second cello concerto in D major. Great, thank you.
Thank you very much. It's, it's really beautiful and excellent playing. This is such a difficult piece for the cello, and I think you, you master it already really wonderfully with a lot of control, elegance, beautiful intonation, and, uh, and I really appreciate what you are doing. Thank you. Uh, but since we're here to yeah. work a little bit, maybe we are going to, to try to uh, exchange about some, uh, some aspect. You obviously already have a a very nice view of the piece and, and, and understanding of the piece, I believe. So, but um, you go very much precisely on that elegant character, which is there. I'm not denying that, but I think sometimes it is to the expense of other aspect of the music, meaning other, maybe you could contrast things more. Yeah. Uh, the colors, you have a very nice tone, but it's it tends to be a bit the same all the time. You see. I'm not saying that this is the most contrasted piece ever, of course, but although in the in the development especially, when you play uh, and, then, and then all these things, almost mm -hmm. the same sound, mm. almost the same sound as as this, as this as well, and then you see all these aspects are different or. No, no. There has to be some thought here at some point, don't you think? Yeah. O okay, with the quality, with uh, we speak of Haydn music, but still, uh, I I would think that this Haydn, especially if you compare it to the first concerto, it is a later piece in his in his life. We should always think that Haydn died in 1809, right? So in a way, rather late. He's obviously the great classical composer, but he died in an era where romanticism, especially if you think of literature, if you think of Goethe, for instance, was long uh, there and had a strong influence on the art. And uh, maybe this is not something we should agree on, but I personally believe that uh, the Sturm und Drang and a certain romanticism is already present in Haydn music. That doesn't mean that this is the same romanticism as there is going to be later on. But there is drama, there, there is opera, no? There is uh, uh, lamento, for instance, when we do... Uh, it is a lamentation. It's not just elegant. It has more dramatic feel, I would say. No, don't you think? Yeah. So that you could serve with a different kind of interpretation, I would say. A different type of sound more daring, simply. And then if I also just go on a more pragmatic uh, relation to the sound, if you play a concerto, you have an orchestra with you. Mm -hmm. You know when we play that, this is, have you played this with orchestra? In the first moment, yes. And why, what did you think? Well, that was a, a strange concert because it was uh, like outdoor with amplification, so okay, it was so different. Of maybe course. not the but best. Maybe I wasn't. Uh, so, but you know, when we play the theme, we have the violins playing. Okay, so it's a duet. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And the, the violins, as soft as they play, they are still not... Yeah. Uh, there is a certain amount of them, and that's going to give a texture, you see? And I think that deserves a little bit more. And then... <laughs> D major, after all, no? Is there a happier, more generous key than, than D major? It is really the key of brightness and generosity and lyricism, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, Beethoven showed us that also. <laughs> okay, let's try that maybe directly. Okay, I, I would ask you a little exercise. If you just play the first note, this uh, first, as long as you want, down and up bow, until you find the color that you like. And also try to, to, to project it in the hall. As you know, like if you, like a painter, uh, looking for a color, or like a sculpture with first before doing the sculpture, picking the material he wants. So what material, what sound do you want? See? But play, play it a, a down and up, long, something. Yes. That's what you want, right? Yeah. Okay. So you see the contact? Mm -hmm. You see the speed? The adjustment, you did a bit of adjustment. So I believe this is always interesting, whatever theme you play, to sort of define the color. The same way in the second theme, if you start the first notes. Okay, I like that, no? It speaks more, it has yeah. more presence. It's difficult to define, but we just adjust. It's like finding your voice for any phrase you play. Then, of course, with that sound, you are going to play more, you are going to play less, you are going to phrase. Lots of things are happening. But you chose your voice, right? When you do... To me, it's like if the voice has not been placed, mm. right? So use maybe that what you just did to play that old phrase now. A lot of the fourth, you, for me, you play a bit in two, not in four. I hear one, two, one. But he writes one, three, four. This is long, right? And then you have intervals, or you could go to the interval the same way. You have the rhythmical. Pulse, but the, the, the melody is much more free. The melody doesn't correspond to the beats. High notes are often not on the beats, the same way. Or the high notes are not on beats, and they should be, I think, a little bit more present. So let's try this. Going to the third beat. I'm sorry. It's all right, but that's, yeah. that's what happens sometimes. That's also what, why I told you about caring for the contact point, because it happens, especially when you climb up, mm -hmm. just a, simply too much on the fingerboard. Can you try it? I mean, I don't want to impose on that, but mm -hmm. what do you think? Yeah, it's like more eloquent. It yeah. speaks more. There's a relation of the interval, so... And not... Mm -hmm. You know, it's a variation. Mm. It's always the same, actually. It's just more. Right? It's actually twice the same thing, except that it varies it. So the variation, I think, should be more lyrical. Otherwise, we repeat ourselves. Yes. Okay. The, the last 
little thing. Make, make sure you don't put an accent on the fourth beat. Yeah. Okay, let's go on. Sometimes we put accents, warm accents, such as. Can you play this, this chord? Can you stop on that note and hear the harmony with it? This is. Do you know what it is called? It's. Uh, I don't know how to say it. In it's called. Way. It's in, in Italian. It's always in Italian. So your Italian, be Italian, is great. Settima di dominante. Yes, but it's an appoggiatura. Yeah. Okay, uh, so play the appoggiatura. Mm -hmm. So we have two A's. The one is... The... Mm -hmm. That lacks the sense of harmony, right? Watch with your legato. When you change string, especially. Yes, that's nice. Mm -hmm. You can play more. Yes, okay. Okay, you see, this is the same principle he, he's using. That's. And the same thing, mm -hmm. but shouldn't be the same thing. Don't repeat yourself. This is one of the major things in music. The composer doesn't repeat his, himself. That's the, one of the things of great composers. He, he re, the, the, the harmonical structure is the same, but it doesn't repeat. So we should not repeat either. Okay. Um, let's go on. Also, that's a thing we spoke about just, just before you on Beethoven. Don't play two strings the same way. If you... You have to play more than this string. Yes? Lock yourself when you go down. You know how you shift there? Wet finger? Wet yes. Finger. So prepare it a little bit more. Like roaring to this mm -hmm. note. If you are a singer, you have to prepare that note. You can't. I'm exaggerating, of course, but. It's not because a note comes at a certain speed that the preparation is at the same speed. The preparation is much before. Uh, already there. Feel the higher note or the bigger interval earlier. Right? You agree we have to make a dominion though there. Mm -hmm. So yes. have a, a bit more sound. The same way, how do you want to plan those beats? Everyone less that uh, the okay. one. Okay, I agree with you. So, and you somewhat do it, but you start so soft yeah. that it's difficult. Mm -hmm. You start already bien. Make sure whatever level that that level allows you to make diminuendos. Okay? Oh. And there, what do you think of the character? It's like really uh, confident and yes. it has to be yeah, confident and, and also quite aggressive maybe. No, no, of course, but it's a de declamation. Yeah. You f I think what I miss sometimes in your playing is this feel of intervals. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
this is a seventh, right? So this is big. So if it's it's a big interval, you need a bit more time and a, and a bit more intensity. And then that this is released. But the harmonical tension makes you play more, no? It's concerto. <laughs> 